Heavenly Father, we come boldly before your throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help as we lift up our military veterans, those who have served our country in the armed forces. We pray this day that you will shine your light of your countenance upon their united efforts of Operation Green Light as they strive in their initiative to support, strengthen, and service the unique challenges that they face our veterans. We pray, Father, that this week, as we honor our veterans, that your amazing grace will abound over our veterans and those providers who do the work to ensure that they have the quality of life that they deserve as our heroes and heroines of the citizens of the United States of America. Now, God, we pray right now because you hold all hearts, that you would turn hearts of those who can make a difference in the lives of our veterans. We pray that Operation Green Light will be a beacon of light to our community by successfully raising the awareness of the resources available to them and their families. We pray right now, God, that you will ever abound with this event, God. Strengthen the staff and those leaders that are over this event. And God, strengthen this community, God, that we would be the source of strength for our veterans for all they have done for us and for this we say thank you in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to this ceremony. Um, it's, it's an important one um, as we acknowledge the past for the future. I appreciate hearing the rendering from our, our, our youth and I want them to pay attention to this ceremony uh, because we're going to mark something that's going to be important for you to extend forward beyond us. And we're going to get into that with our marks in, in this whole week in essence. But if you think about it, um, my, my, for me, um, I was not a veteran. So I salute those individuals who actually fought in all the wars, what it means to stand up, what it means to push back, what it means to define what you represent, your beliefs, your values. Veterans are important, right? No, this is America. I appreciate your attitude, your aptitude toward your allies in our America. I thank you for your boldness, right? I thank you for your bravery, for your brothers and sisters alongside of you. 
I thank you for all that you are, your, your courageousness and your character toward our citizenry and this beautiful country. I just wanna, I wanna thank you for those who, who did not fight. Let me represent that voice for those who did fight. And I wanna thank you. I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. We appreciate what you've done and we're gonna extend that as beyond just services today. It's about maintaining and expanding those services tomorrow because do you know what you guys have done? I do. I appreciate that wall. I appreciate what you stood for. And you need to be told more often and be shown it, not just said it. Thank you so much. Welcome to the show. What a momentous occasion to all of our veterans. I too did my time. And for those of you who've done your time and, and for those of you, and, and I wanna acknowledge those, those military families those wives and, and those, those husbands and, and those children who, who have to kind of deal with those times when mom and dad or that veteran is afar. Thank you for your time, for your service. Thank you for those of you who just want to honor those who've done a great job and a great deed, and that's what the price of freedom is all about. And I want to thank you for just honoring and being uh, submissive and humble in this moment. To those youth who know that Operation Greenlight is one of those occasions that should have been done many, many years ago, but now here we are standing before those that have went off and served and for those that we've lost in their time of service. Thank you. Thank you for all that you've done and thank you for just being a part of the future. And again, to our young folks, as Vice Chairman Robson stated, you are the future. Stand up and be accounted for. Thank you again. And to the 25th Infantry Division, Honolulu, Hawaii, thank you. And I serve you and I serve you more. Thank you. When I look out in the crowd and I see all of the hats that represent the different infantries and the different divisions that you served in, it helps me to remember, and I hope everyone else to remember, that service is not without sacrifice. Green is a symbol of hope. It is a symbol of service. It is a symbol of well-being. And it is our hope here in Douglas County that as we put forth resources, we are reminded of this moment. Uh, I know we did appropriate to the CSB who helped to open up a veterans housing community not too far from here. That is but one, one way that we can say thank you. But there are so many more. This is another way. As we say thank you for your service and your sacrifice, we just want to remind everyone else that you wear green and you're camouflaged among us, but you are some of our greatest heroes and heroines. We will not forget you and we will not forget your families who have served alongside you. Your bravery is what allows us to have the freedoms to serve today. And I'm a woman of faith, so I know that you know God says the best leaders are the ones who serve. So thank you for your service and your leadership. Enjoy the rest of the program. Anyone who is a veteran and has served in the audience, if you are able to, please stand so when we light the building green, it signifies honoring you today. Thank you very, very much for standing and thank you very, very much for your service and your sacrifice. We do ask, um, after the house is illuminated green, it's really up to you if you want to remain standing, but if you want to hold your applause, because immediately after the house is turned green, Yeager Middle School will surprise us with another selection. So we're going to do a countdown to three, and when we reach one, if everyone can say, Mark and Allen, light the house. <laughs> three, two, one, Mark and Allen, light the house. Oh, we supposed to be holding, sorry. <laughs> Come on children, join us with your beautiful voices again, please.
What I want to say today, I want to reach out to every single veteran in Douglas County and let you know that help is here. You have help from veterans, by veterans, to support you in our Douglas County Community Services Board. We vow to never leave a fallen comrade, so we owe that to you. That is a promise that goes well beyond our service days, and we want you to know that we care and we love you and you have a voice. Thank you. One of the things I'd like to talk about, uh, it, it also holds with, with what was just said, was the veterans sometimes don't have a place to go. That's why I'm here. That's why Mr. Barnett's here. That's why several of you are here. Uh, the American Legion, uh, that's what we do. We take care of our veterans. We take care of our community. We take care of our house, our family. I wanted to give you a brief uh, lesson about the American Legion. It was chartered by Congress in 1919 as a patriotic veterans organization focusing on service to veterans, service members, and communities. The Legion evolved from a group of war-weary veterans of World War I into one of the most influential nonprofit groups in the United States. In 1919, March 15th through the 17th, Members of the American Expeditionary Force convened in Paris for the first American Legion Caucus. May 8th through the 10th, the St. Louis Caucus, the American Legion is adopted as the organization's official name. The Legion's draft, preamble, and constitution are approved. On June the 9th, the National Executive Committee adopts the Legion emblem. And on September the 16th, Congress charters the American Legion. November the 10th through the 12th, the first Legion convention convenes in Minneapolis. The Constitution and preamble are adopted. Delegates vote 361 to 323 to locate the Legion's national headquarters in Indianapolis instead of Washington. A resolution is passed in support of Boy Scouts of America. Today, the Legion is the chartering agency for more than 1,700 scouting units made up of approximately 64,000 youths. So we're, we're, we're aiming on, on our youth for tomorrow. Currently, we are, we're standing roughly at 2 million members strong, and we encourage everybody that's served, that has parents that serve, that uh, the, the wives, the daughters, that their, par their parents have served. We welcome you to come join our community. Help us help each other. That's what we're here for. That's what we're about. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Director Lightford and Senior Vice Commander Patchett for being in the program today. And of course, thank you very much for your service. So right now we have another very special moment in our program today. We would like to introduce you all to a very special person. He is that fine young man on the back of your program. His name is James Thomas Pittman Jr. He ain't got so James Thomas Pittman Jr. was born March 15, 1926 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was raised on humbling beginnings, and at the age of nine, he lost his 27-year-old mother. At a tender age of 12, he decided to leave his father's care and go into the care of his grandmother, where he remained until 17, when he enlisted in naval service. James was assigned to the Beach Battalion in Oceanside, California, and when Owajima happened, he was there on the USS Carteret. From Owajima, he went straight to Okinawa on the USS Dawn. Two experiences of history where most men, understandably so, would prefer to experience neither of them. And 18-year-old James went to both, back to back. Mr. Pittman was not explicitly asked about his not too pleasant experiences, but those experiences are his all the same. And so he shared with us his very first night where the fear raptured him so much. If any of his comrades moved the wrong way, he literally could have killed them. That's how fearful he was. 
He shared with us how he slept in a post office box, him and some of his comrades slept in a post office box because a post office box was shelter from gunfire, from bombs, and other elements of their environment of the time. He shared with us how when the USS Dawn was called to leave Okinawa, James and some of his comrades were not on it. In his own words, they had to hitchhike across the sea to get home. And because that wasn't enough public servitude for him, James returned to the city of Atlanta, where he was a firefighter, a lieutenant, and a captain for the city of Atlanta Fire Department over a 32-year career. When James... When James was asked about his favorite pastimes, he responded with two things without hesitation, without even blinking. Number one, that's easy, 5220. 5220 at his time was a provision in the GI Bill that awarded war veterans $20 per week for up to, for up to 52 weeks if they were in the war. His second favorite pastime, which is something he seemed to cherish the most when he talked about it, you can see his heart swell up. That pastime is Elizabeth Jones Pittman of Adele, Georgia. Elizabeth Jones Pittman was proven to be smart, smart as a whip actually. Had no problem cracking a whip, apparently. She was a nurse, she was his friend, his comrade. She gave him 54 years of marriage. She gave him two beautiful daughters, Catherine and Carol. And it's not really fair to call her a pastime because when they talk about it, you can tell that she still lives in James. She lives in their daughters. She lives in their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. They speak of her and it is logical to conclude that Elizabeth Jones Pittman is this family's green light. So you see, Mr. Pittman has sacrificed. Mr. Pittman has suffered. And yet, Mr. Pittman manages to love, he managed to build a family and a career for himself. To this day, he manages to hold on to a very unique sense of humor. Spend two minutes with him, and trust me, it is proven to be a fact. Okay? <laughs> Mr. Pittman embodies public servitude. He embodies brotherly love. And so the Board of Commissioners have opted to honor him today as Douglas County's oldest living veteran of record. Ladies and gentlemen, 96-year-old James Thomas Pittman, Jr. <laughs> Douglas County Commissioners, Douglas County, I want to thank you for honoring this true hero. And I, it, it has raised his spirits to receive this honor today, and he's asked me to say a few words on his behalf. Thank you for that interview, and every bit of those words were absolutely true and captured the essence. A person who grew up in an orphanage, who went and had to have his grandmother sign for him at 17 years old to serve his nation, and he served it with honor. He had a very, very good friend he lost in World War II. It lives with him every day, losing that brother in arms. As was stated, at 17, he was on the beaches of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. What a hero, what a hero. But he didn't stop serving when he came home in 1945. He served this great state of Georgia and the city of Atlanta with his service and I've met several of the firemen who served under Mr. Pittman and it was quite an honor. I met Mr. Pittman several years ago. His love for his family, his love for his wife, his love for his community and just by looking around at the veterans and their families that are here today is a testimony to this uniquely great veteran. And I thank on behalf of Mr. Pittman for honoring James Pittman Jr. as the oldest living veteran 
in Douglas County. Thank you so much for doing that honor. So in honor of your service and your bravery and inspirational commitment to your country and your fellow brethren, you are honored, respected, and greatly appreciated for your life of service. Please accept the symbol of sincere gratitude on behalf of the citizens of Douglas County. We take great pride in being your neighbor, Mr. Pittman. Uh, thank you all for coming to this most worthy event. Um, it is just absolutely fabulous and it touches my heart. I only have one regret in my life thus far, and that is not serving in the United States military. My hat goes off to all of our veterans. Uh, we have heard uh, from, or I've seen, our longest living uh, county veteran Madam Chair and the Board of Commissioners have passed the uh, proclamation for this event, officially making it a part of our Veterans Day celebratory events. And we are going to continue to find ways, creative ways, to honor and to acknowledge our veterans. Counties all across America are joining in on this Operation Green Light. My wife and I, we have already changed out our porch light so we have changed to the green bulb, thanks to Justine. <laughs> and I encourage all of the uh, residents of the tributary subdivision as well as subdivisions all across Douglas County to join us and change out your light and, uh, and, and show that you are in full support of this event. I want to thank again you, Douglas County, for coming out tonight. I want to thank the Board of Commissioners, Madam Chair, for uh, uh, making this official Douglas County uh, event. Also want to uh, thank uh, Justine Hayward for her excellency in putting all of this together. I think that she deserves a round of applause. I also want to thank the staff who supported her in this event, those who are over there uh, whipping up hot cocoa, even though it's 80 degrees. <laughs> we thought it was gonna be colder, but we were prepared either way. So great planning for this event. I do want to say uh, in closing that this is a most momentous occasion, and I pray that uh, Douglas County is blessed. I pray that you all are praying for this county for this city. I pray that you are praying for our nation to keep us safe and strong. God bless Douglas County and God bless these United States of America. Thank you. Thank you.